on the mound, the legendary Leroy Satchel Paige. Arguably the greatest pitcher this sport has ever seen. We know for certain the oldest rookie in the history of Major League Baseball. Now, Major League Baseball says that Satchel was 42 years old when he finally got his opportunity to pitch in the Major Leagues with then the Cleveland Indians. Most who knew Satchel believe that he was at least 10 years older than he claimed to be. Satchel was likely born into the early to mid-1890s in Mobile, Alabama. And so that birth record was typically kept in the back page of the family Bible. And according to Satchel, the goat ate that page out the Bible. His original tombstone has a question mark by his birthday. Yeah, the old man literally took it with him to his grave. But when we talk about Satchel Page, there is really no one to compare him to. Not someone who combines the longevity. By his estimation, he pitched in over 2,600 games. The great stuff. Recorded some 55 no-hitters and only God knows how many strikeouts. And the charisma. He could sell it. Yeah, he could sell it. But he could also back it up. There will never, ever, ever be another Leroy Satchel Page. Satchel famously had names for his pitches. So he didn't have fastball, curveball, changeup. No, not Satchel. Satchel had what he called his midnight creeper. He had the two humper. He had the bat dodger. He had the hesitation pitch. He had the long tom, the short tom, the jump ball, the trouble ball, the radio ball, the wobbly ball, the dipsy do. And he also had a pitch that he famously called his b-ball. You know why he called it the b-ball? Because Satchel says, it bees where I want it to be when I want it to be there. And so he had all the stuff you needed to be a star. And he was just that. He was not only the Negro League's biggest and brightest star, but he was one of the biggest stars in baseball history. They clocked Satchel Page unknowingly in a ball game in Griffith Stadium in D.C. Satchel retires the side, and the kid from the military comes over. Mr. Page, Mr. Page, we clock your fastball at 105 miles per hour. Satchel looks at the kid. He says, son, I wish I'd known you were timing me. I could have thrown harder than that. Yeah, you'll hear from the old Negro League players who saw Satchel in his prime that if anyone tells you they saw his fastball in the hitting zone, they're lying. Yeah, you might have seen it leave his hand. But by the time it got there to home plate, it literally was about the size of an aspirin tablet. What really made Satchel so special was 105 with pinpoint control. He could put it exactly where he wanted to put it, and I'm not talking about just throwing strikes. Uh-uh. The catcher set the target. He hit the target. He didn't miss. You see, he didn't warm up in the bullpen like most pitchers do, thrown to the catcher across home plate. You know what Satchel would use? A stick of foil chewing gum wrapper. The catcher would sit the chewing gum wrapper on top of home plate. And wherever the catcher moved the chewing gum wrapper, Satchel right over the top of that chewing gum wrapper. And as Satchel would say, he'd work both corners of that chewing gum wrapper. He was absolutely uncanny. One of my favorite Satchel Page stories involves the old man pitching in the Denver Post Tournament. And they're playing an all-white semi-pro team. The first kid from the semi-pro white team gets into the batter's box. Satchel throws him a fastball. He dribbles it down the third base line. It stays fair. The kid beats it out, gets an infield hit. Well, about that time, one of the kids from the opposing team steps into the dugout steps and says, let's beat him. He ain't nothing but an overrated donkey. Well, Satchel Page had a nickname for everyone. His nickname, famously for the legendary Buck O'Neill, was Nancy. 
that's a whole nother story. But anyway, Satchel looks over at first base and he says, Nancy, did you hear that? Bugs said, yes, Satchel, I heard it. He said, Nancy, bring him in. So Buck turns and motions for the outfield to take a couple steps in. Satchel looks over at first base, he says, Nancy, bring them all the way in. Honest to God's truth, there were seven guys kneeling around the mound. And Satchel strikes out the side on nine straight pitches. He looks into the opposing team's dugout and says, overrated, darky head. But the legendary Buck O'Neill always said, if he had one game to win and any choice of any pitcher from any era, it would be the legendary Satchel Page. He says you might beat him when he was out there messing around, but when he was locked in, forget about it. Now, Major League Baseball says that Satchel was 42 years old when he finally got his opportunity to pitch in the Major League in 1948 with the Cleveland Indians. He, along with Larry Doty, would help Cleveland win the last World Series at that time that Cleveland had won. Many thought Satchel should have been named Rookie of the Year. He goes 6-1 with a 2.4 ERA his rookie season at age 42, which means he might have been closer to 52. Now, Satchel in 1965 is believed to be 59 years old if you believe he was born in 1906, which I do not, but for the sake of the story, we'll say that he was indeed born in 1906. He pitches three shutout innings against the Boston Red Sox, giving up only one hit in those three innings. Great trivia question. Who got that long hit off of Satchel? The legendary Carl Yastrzemski. Yes. Yaz gets a double against the old man. Satchel leaves him at third and shut down everybody else over three of the most remarkably pitched innings in baseball history. And they were all turning going back into the dugout in utter disbelief that they couldn't hit that old man. Without question, Satchel Page was the Negro League's biggest and brightest star. The man would ride into towns and the entire towns would shut down to watch him pitch. Everyone wanted to see the old man do his thing. Was he a little bit disheartened when he wasn't the first to break baseball's color barrier? Of course he was, because in many ways, he was the Negro and I'm not sure there's any more lore or legend surrounding any one athlete. Perhaps it's because we don't really know how old he truly was, and because he dazzled us for decades. By the time he ended his career, he was either 59 or maybe 69 years old, and he was still getting it done. Only the immortal Leroy Satchel Page.